scour scour the media to find it. And certainly certainly Portland, because there's a lot of coverage, is happening every night. And uh, the video I saw last night was in, in residential neighborhoods and fires. <laughs> there's actually a, a pretty funny, sad, pathetic video of them, you know, throwing, uh, I guess, Molotov cocktails or whatever, setting stuff on fire in the street. And this one, this one rioter jumping over the fire and basically his trousers catching fire and he's, he's running around with his trousers on fire, pants on fire, pants on fire. And uh, people are trying to put out the fire and everything. And, and it, it I, you know, I have to say I laughed, you know, as, as sad as that is, I laughed because, you know, he clearly is an idiot. He was jumping over this fire and um, he's rioting. That's two strikes against him. And, you know, he kind of deserved it. So, um, uh, and, and the frantic efforts to try to put out, a, put out the fire and they're not prepared. They, they have no clue what they're doing. Uh, it, 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 yeah, it's, anyway, it's, it's sad and pathetic. And, and what's sad and pathetic is, look, there's always a fringe within a culture that wants to see things burn. Uh, there certainly is a fringe here that's nihilistic and wants to destroy and loot and, 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 and tear everything down. What is truly pathetic is not them. They, they always exist, and they're, they're, I think, still an insignificant portion, uh, an insignificant portion of the American public. I think what's really pathetic, what's really sad, what's really depressing, what's really concerning, and what really should worry all of us are the people who don't care, or the people who try to justify it, or the intellectuals giving this intellectual ammunition and presenting theoretical justifications for all this is going on. That, I think, is what, is, uh, what should really scare us. And I want to I talk about the book, to, you know, In Defense of Looting Again, uh, which I talked about a few, uh, I think, a week ago. I've now, you know, there's a number of other reviews that have come out in the book that are interesting uh, that I'm going to recommend, and, and John Cochran writes about it. Um, it's good to see people catching on to this book. It's good to see people critiquing this book. It's good to see this book getting the prominence it deserves from a negative perspective. Right? Now, before I do that, I, I just want to let everybody know, I don't know if you know this, but in Portland, in Portland, Oregon, where these riots are going on every day, we're actually, uh, one of my supporters, one of the listeners to the show, has raised some money. Thank you, Ragnar of the Desert, for helping Fund uh, fund yesterday, of course, was phenomenal. We raised over a thousand dollars here on the show. Uh, but Ragnar is also uh, instrumental in getting uh, in getting funding for two billboards. We're going to be putting up. He's going to be putting up. Uh, uh, Portland supporter is going to be putting up two billboards in uh, in Portland. They're not going to be uh, a big billboard on the on the I five, I guess, that goes through uh, through the main part. They're going to be two smaller billboards in two locations in Portland. I don't know exactly where they're going to be, but um, it is, um, it is a, you know, uh, it's going to be exciting to watch what happens. So as soon as the billboards are up, I will let you know. As soon as the billboards are up, we'll see if subscribers or listeners to the show or contributions or any of these other parameters budge. And we'll see whether this idea of billboards um, is, is, it works. But, um, it's, it's truly interesting. Uh, it's truly going to be interesting in the hub, in the center of rioting, in the center of where the far left is, uh, is strongest, it seems, and is, is wackiest and is most evil. To have two bobos for the Iran Book Show is going to be exciting and it's going to be interesting. And it's going to be, you know, we'll see if they burn them down. You know, that'll make the news. Imagine seeing one of those billboards go up in flame being filmed on Fox News and, you know, with my picture and the URL being flashed across the, uh, the Fox News, uh, Fox News. That if it was just the looting, if it was just the riots, everybody can see the immorality, the irrationality, the, the nihilism, the, the, the truly, truly disgusting aspect of that. And, and there's a massive, there's a massive um, movement against, against that, right? Against, um, writing and looting and so on. But it's the intellectuals who provide justification for it, who provide cover for it, who provide moral defenses of the looting, who say looting is good. 
It's the armchair lip leftists who sit in their comfy homes, typically several million dollar homes, and yeah, you know, are, are silently, or you know, maybe among their close friends, supporting the looting. It's the people who donate money without thinking about where it's going and that much of their money goes to the looting. That is the real ugly part of all of this. That is what is really horrific. And I told you last time or a few, a few shows ago about this book in defense of looting. Um, and now there is a review of this book by, ooh, I can't pronounce her name, Grammy Woods in the Atlantic Magazine. So I, 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 you know, I definitely recommend this review in the Atlantic Magazine. Go there, support this review, give it a thumbs up because it, it's got a lot of good stuff and it really rips this book apart. It really shows the true evil of this book by quoting it, by crit critiquing it, by exposing it for what it really is, which is pure and utter communist nihilism. Well, communist is, no, it's, it's, it's egalitarian nihilism. You know, the real advocacy for the destruction of the world in which we live. That's what this book is about. You know, NPR, who did this very favorable, positive interview with the author of the book, summarizes the book as an argument that, quote, looting is a powerful tool to bring about real lasting change in society. It is. If the change in society you want is the destruction of capitalism, the destruction, or, or the remnants of capitalism, the destruction of markets, the destruction of private property, the destruction of the American system of government. If you want authoritarianism, if you want if you want authoritarianism that knocks everybody down into poverty, if you want the elimination of everything that has made this country good, prosperous, and successful, then yes, looting is a powerful tool to bring about real lasting change. But the change is all horrific. The change is all disastrous. The change is all evil. Osterwell, who is the author of this book, and she will go to hell for it, Oh, actually, she's already in hell for it. She says, without police and without state oppression, if we get rid of the police, this is, again, I harken back to the show I did about Rousseau. This is kind of Rousseau's vision. If we just get rid of the institutions, if we get rid of state oppression, if we get rid of a police, then we can all live in an anarchic state of blissful savagery where we can have things for free. Yeah, the things you can... What happens when you steal it all? What happens when you finish looting it all? What happens when all the stuff is gone because you stole it? Who's going to produce it? Who's going to sell it? If society is based on the principle of looting, if society is based on the principle of, quote, free, who's going to make it, produce it, sell it, transport it, ship it? I think my voice was so loud that it, it, it set off one of the cars here outside the alarm on one of the cars. Hope it's not my car. Who is going to produce the stuff when society is just being looted across the board? So somebody says, Andrew says that NPR apologized for not challenging factual inaccuracies in the book. Isn't that beside the point? Yes, it is beside the point. The issue is not factual inaccuracies. The issue indeed is the evil ideas, the evil philosophy, the evil ideology that is projected in the book, that is reflected in the book. It's not about this particular concrete or that particular concrete. All right, car stopped. No, I think it was. I think it was actually me causing that. I think. Uh, I think I pressed the wrong button on the. Uh, <laughs> the whole neighborhood is pissed off at me right now. All right, it was the looters trying to break into the car and take it. So yes, it's not about facts. It's about moral philosophy, political philosophy. 
It's about the fact that the whole point of civilization is to stop violence. The whole point of civilization is to protect your property, is protect your life, your liberty, your property, your pursuit of happiness. That's the point of civilization. Civilization is the movement towards less violence, more protection of property, more privacy. But all of that is negated by the looters. They can just barge into your home and take your stuff or your business and take your stuff whenever they want and they would be justified. Why? Because they say the whole system of ownership, property, is innately and structurally white supremacists. Right? The whole thing is structurally white supremacist. And that's what they're about. They're about the destruction of private property. They're about the disseminate, you know, complete evisceration of private property. And indeed, our world civilization is built on a bedrock of private property and the rule of law. And they negate all of that. They reject all of that. I mean, what the people in the streets, what the looters, and what the intellectuals to support them, whether they are fully fully thought this through or not, this is the barbarians at the gate. They represent barbarism. They represent the worst possible outcome. And to me, it's less again about the people in the street smashing stuff. Always going to get a few of those. It's more about the intellectuals. It's more about these books, people who write these books, trying to justify it, trying to provide it with intellectual cover, trying to pretend that there's some intellectual or philosophical legitimacy to these ideas, to these actions. We're talking about the book In Defense of Looting. In Defense of Looting, there is a, again, a very good, um, very good uh, review of the book in, uh, in Atlantic Magazine. Uh, this, uh, I'm not sure what issue of the Atlantic Magazine, but it's written by an author, uh, Graham Woods. Uh, in, uh, it's an Atlantic essay uh, in Atlantic Magazine. I would definitely recommend reading it it truly is unbelievable now note and i'll end with this on this particular issue right now note that oh by the way i just want to make well i'll make that point afterwards so it won't be the last point i make um note that on the book in defense of looting that doesn't recognize property rights the property rights of this evil institution of white supremacists on the cover of the book it says right under the copyright notice it says the scanning, uploading, and distribution of this book without permission is a theft of the author's intellectual property. Thank you for your support of the author's rights. <laughs> These people have no shame. You dedicate a whole book to the negation of the whole idea of rights, to the negation of the idea of property rights. And yet you declare, of course, that's a publisher stuck it in because the publisher is one of these capitalist entities in a, in a free market, a capitalist thing that is, uh, that is still holding on to remnants of the idea that private property is a good thing and intellectual property should and must be protected and defended. What we need today what I call the new intellectual would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages 
and to the role of the collectivist brought. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want, to see, I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes but uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share, and uh, you can support the show at youronbrookshow.com slash support, or on Patreon, or Subscribestar, or Locals, uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value, hopefully, you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if you... Even if you just come here to troll, or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe, because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified. Right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.